Hello, SBF family. Welcome back to our channel, Super Buddies Forever. Today, I am going to show you how to turn wood into looking like stone. You've seen that much in our dollhouse in many areas, this same look and technique. I've showed you how to dry brush already and get the faux technique of stone, but now I'm gonna show you the texture. I have some wood blocks here. This is my main key to texturizing and many things. Brand doesn't matter, DAP is nice. There's another one I showed that they were out of. But my favorite thing is clear because I put it on, when it goes on it's wet and white and then as it dries it becomes clear so I know when it's dry and I can work on it. So that is definitely the key to this project. Got some wood blocks that Alex cut out for me. These are gonna be risers. Um, not sure which order we're doing or showing, but we have our character, critique, spotlight, whatever name we end up calling it. And in the stage, I want some risers and things. So these back ones, which I'm gonna cover with fabric, are for that, so they stand up. And then when you have the next doll, or if you've already seen the videos, that one will stand there. You can still see the heads behind. And then in the front, to give some more space to showing the dolls and seeing their pretty little faces, I'm going to make these ones seats. So you'll see those. I'm going to make those stone, but make those look like grassy hills or something. Um, this could also be handy, not if you were doing a stage, but if you had shelf um, displays. And you could have some standing and some sitting, or you can have the three, three lines. Um, three heights if you have a deeper shelf. So this is versatile, versatile for what you may need. So starting off, Alex just cut, cut me some simple, simple blocks from 2x4. I've clearly marked bottom so I know what I'm going to texturize. The most important part is sanding the edges. Edges of wood could be quite harsh. As you can see by that one, that's my bottom. I didn't worry about it so much. So I took the time to sand. And sanding is a very tedious little job but makes the project look smoother like stone would look. I'm going to try two different techniques, regular normal texturing and maybe try a brick look like I did in the behind of the beach on these little ones. Hope you enjoy this how-to. I've begun to play. So in true as is fashion, I have a few things around me. I have water to save my brush so it doesn't dry out on here. I have tweezers, I'll explain, pencil, a wet cloth, blocks. And then I have this masking tape of some sort that I've had for years that I got from Oriental Trading. And I unfortunately do not know where you would get it now, but it had three different sizes. I'm using the little size. And fear not, there's many different ways I'm going to show you to do a brick look. So here I have a piece of wood and I use my skinny little masking tape and I put it around to give me the effect of bricks. The only important part here is on the side when I taped it on I put a little bit and folded it over and that'll make sense when you start pulling it off you don't have to dig in there because it's still going to be a little bit wet. I've only eyeballed that I haven't measured it because the beauty of brick stones is the mortar is never perfect so I can get away with it and that will be the mortar and then we'll work on the top to make a texture or if you did not want to use caulk for texture you could have painted this your base color which would be your mortar say like a dark gray and then you could make this masking tape and then you could sponge on a different color a couple different colors sponge it on pull those off and you're gonna have that stone look that's just flat and at least your rounded edges have made it look soft and that would work too. Now going into the texture I like to use I have my brush which is an old brush I saved them squirt a little caulking on my tray and it's like playing with frosting so I just get a gob on it's kind of sculpting with frosting is really what it is and all I'm doing is building it around, building what looks going to end up looking like my blocks. I try to get a little heavy around here because when I pull those off, of course I want to have some different definition. I happen to be doing it lighter up here because I know the dolls are going to sit there so I don't want that so thick that it makes them lopsided. 
when they're sitting or fall over. And that's, you can go dab it, you can swirl it. Here's where you can learn to sculpt with the caulking. I like to pat it. Remember caulking does sink to some degree, so if you do it too thin, you're not gonna get much of an effect, but even a thin one is something. So that's how I will work that. Of course, I will work that until I can't set it down. My fingers let it dry and I'll have to go back to it. So that is one block and see over here. I'm just gonna really push it into that tape. So I'll be very sure when I pull it off, I get a line. All right, so I will work on that some more. Oh, don't keep that dry too long because you that brush will be trash. So this one I've done already besides the part I have to hold it. It's begun to dry because it's going clear. Again, why I love that stuff. So I'm going to show you now those nibs right there. See those nibs? You don't want to let that fully dry because otherwise it'll just seal that tape right in. So it's still kind of white, but still a little wet. Same would apply if you were just using paint. And then I'm going to begin, whoops, I did that one out first, so let's go back over here. And I'm going to begin to pull that off. Now, can you see that? It's a cross. It's a cross on the top. I mean, of course, you can make your designs of brick any way you want, but now you can see we have a beautiful mortar line in there. And then texture, which gets harder to see when it goes clear. But I think you'll get it. And of course, the paint, now once that's dry, I'm going to prime it. You can or cannot. I prefer to prime. Then I'm going to do my base coat, say dark gray. And then I'm going to do my dry brush technique I've shown you in a different video, just on the textured parts to make it really pop. Now, if you do not have the masking tape, this would actually apply exactly how I did the bricks behind the beach wall and how I did the archway that was in the schoolhouse just totally free-handed so I also have done and now this is not what I'm gonna do in the end of this piece but I'm using it as an example I just penciled in approximately where I wanted my brick lines to go my mortar lines and I'm gonna get some of this and I'm gonna form with it and make my bricks I have made my bricks and all I will do is stay and leave a little bit now here you can really go thick go thin the most important part so there's one brick and then I'll make my next brick and like painting I will just leave a mortar line and that's the way you can do it without masking tape. Much more time consuming, somewhat enjoyable. And of course, if I were going down here, now do you see that? See how you can make that? That's exactly how I did the beach one. It was just easier than all the tape. So I hope you understand that and just follow through. Sometimes you gotta set it down so you can do those things. Now that was an example. So this one, I'm gonna do the simplest form ever. Use a brush and just do whatever. Put some on, you can use your finger. I've used my finger. So much for those mortar lines that we just tried to create by... I was giving an example <laughs> to the Wonderful SBF family. <laughs> Hush it, Mr. Alex. <laughs> Or you could just paint the whole thing. Well, it's different <laughs> effects. You can show that, right, people? So it, just different effects. Now this one, this one's going to look, of course, like blocked stone. And this one's just going to look like a, a big block of one stone. One giant block. Yeah, that's what I want to do. So you can do it with a brush. I've often, I keep my little wet towel. If I don't want it so thick, I can go, you can go on fingers, a very one I've done a lot is just going like that and then that will sink some and be super subtle that I think I did around the um, pool area so it's up to you whatever you want there's where your artistic flair comes from so of course I got to do some of that set it down let it dry and come back to it 
Oh, I will work on those and we'll see it when it's done. All right, now another reason this is helpful on wood, see how ugly that is? That is all potted and just the way wood sometimes does, it's textured, it's a mess. You'd have a hard time making just paint to make that look like stone. So this is where that caulking comes in great because you can fill all that in. Do it thick because it will sink, of course. And you're going to make those things disappear. And of course, use your caulking to camouflage this. And you'll never even see that later when it gets painted. So another thing I just thought of too that you can use with caulking is remember the haunted sky, the background? If you try to imagine all the dolls were here in the background instead of just a piece of plywood was texturized and look like the sky. This is again where you can sculpt with this. When I did the comet, I had the comet kind of here. Well, you can see I'm just doing it. You can make things with this, sculpting it. And I just went out with it like this. And that is how I got that comet texture. And I did many layers until I got it to the way I wanted. As well, using that same technique, when I wanted the skies that are in the background and put some texture to the background, I kind of went like that. I could leave it. I could use my finger and do whatever. Or I just used a brush and made my clouds in the sky. So you can, I hope this gives you a really good visual on all the things you can do with the caulking and use on a plain piece of board to transform it into something new, be it with your finger, the brush, or coming straight, oh, let me actually think of something else while I'm here, the waves in the water. I went like that, anywhere I wanted waves, and I let those dry. Of course, those dried clear, and that is what became the waves in the beach water, and I just put them randomly wherever I wanted. Oh, those ones are not the prettiest looking waves. So they looked like waves coming crashing into the beach. This is a really, really neat medium for being artistic. As you can see, once you get the hang of it, it's like toothpaste and it can become a whole lot of things. Just don't eat it. Yeah, definitely don't eat it and definitely be prepared. Your brush will dry up quick use a scrap brush or get it in the water to soak it off a little bit of soap a little soak and your brush will be just fine and use those used brushes for this kind of project all righty let me get finished in this and one last thing that just came to mind as i mentioned the pencil we're going to use this in the cabin you can use it for the bricks this will make a wood look or you can do your things Put on your caulking any which way. Then you can use a pencil to get your lines. Of course, you want to keep this to wipe that off. And you could also, if you feel you have a steady hand, you could do it that way. And not as rough there, but it works. So what I'm looking to do in the cabin, and then I'll faux with a fake wood, is I'll make the lines like that. So it'll go the way of wood, say you wanted to do a floor. I was going to do this in the cottage, but it was too complicated to get inside. You could lightly go like this and make it like wood. Wood lines. And then faux that, maybe if you're going to do one every now and then to make it look like wood slats. And maybe put a little knot in it here and there. There's another one to show. I did mention tweezers and I forgot to mention why. That was only because these are really drying out really nice. If perchance you made that little nib too small, I just had tweezers handy to pull it or if it was sticking you could get it up. So that was the only reason I mentioned that. So while I'm working on those and then I'm waiting to dry, I'm just going to take these. I have my pinking shears. I have my fray check so I don't have to sew. And I'm going to use my matching coordinating fabric to my stage bottom and cover those up. So these ones will look more, those will be stone. These will look more like a hill in the background. 
course, you can use any fabric you want. Yippee skippy. These here, as you can see by the shine, are drying really well and just about ready for some primer. Um, I'm just going to show a little better visual. Hopefully, well, let's get the dog butt out of there. <laughs> and um, that's kind of what I'm going for. And if you can visualize that, if you just need this for a shelf and not a stage, the 2x4 back here is laid on its back or front, depending on what 2x4 means. What does 2x4 mean, honey? This is 4 inches and this is 2 inches. And then the lengths come anywhere from 6 to 8 inches, or 6 to 8, 12 feet and up. You pay per foot. So that's laying on the 4 inch side. This one, we got the 4 inch side going up. And that makes, where is she? A nice seat. So if you can see the staggering effect, if you just wanted to use the display idea in your display shelves, that's a good way to be able to see three rows of all their faces. Now you can just paint this if you'd like. I've of course wrapped mine. Um, I want to let you know if you don't have a saw with the 2x4s coming in all different lengths, I have been using, you get to do a little math, about two inches, two and a half inches per doll stand. So these are two and a half inches. I'm hoping for one doll to sit here, two to three to sit on here. This was six inches. So approximately two inches per butt per doll or per stand. So if you do some math and with your shelf width, you could just paint these white or black, whatever color your shelf may be. Primer, put some craft paint on it. You could spray paint them even easier, but you can go down to your local Home Depot or Lowe's we have here. If you buy a two by four, they will cut it for you. So if you know the width of your shelf, you can easily say, hey, I want X amount in this amount and do your math and you can get whatever width you want to fit your shelf. I hope that helps. They do not guarantee precision cuts, but they can get you definitely maybe go about a quarter of an inch or a half inch smaller just to be on the safe side that it won't need a little trim. So this is where I am with this one. I am wrapping because of course I wanted to blend in with my um, shelf or stage display. What have I done here? That's important. I made absolutely sure the hot glue was not thick or even on there. I made sure the hot glue went on this side and went on this side so when I put these on, they won't be wobbly. As well, I paid attention to that on the bottom. I did this very thin so that when I set it down, it's not wobbly. That's the most important. And then in the front, I was just cautious not to make it too thick so you wouldn't see those hot glue lines. That's just me, maybe you don't care about that. You could wrap it fully, but I left a little excess off, which when I put one on top of the other by picking a good fabric, you can see quickly that blends in really, really well. And that's the look that I desire, even if you wanted it in your display cases, just to look pretty, look like they're in grassy knolls and hills, that could be an idea for you. And I'm just gonna take, I use pinking shears to get that. Don't leave it too long. And then I'm just gonna put my fray check, which is awesome. It's just liquid you get from Joann's in the sew section. I'm gonna put some on my edges and then therefore they're not gonna unravel and fray and look ugly. So the other thing while you're at the Lowe's or whatever, you wanna get a sanding block. Those are awesome. I think they're about $3 for two. I love those things. Those are definitely handy because with any of this, Sanding would probably be your most important to make it look good and so you don't get splinters from the cuts. Well, let me get to my priming and finishing that other riser right back there. About the freight check. And a shout out to Kikio12667 again. I forget which one she was first on, but I think I got one more to catch up for that. Shout out. Priming is done and first coat of color is done, my base coat. I'm going to do another quick shout out because I'm doing some catching up on first. Brianna Kamora, thank you very much for jumping in on the first game. I think that's not only your first one. Thank you. Um, so here we am. Now you're starting to see. Look at that. Doesn't that look awesome? 
definitely not a piece of wood anymore. It still is, but it hasn't changed. So I've just used this paint here, which is my, uh, from, geez, what did I do with this? I think I did the out exterior of the cottage with that. So I got that left over, which is fantastic. They're all base coated. And then over here, oops, those are stuck. You can definitely see the texture. I did two coats. I want to give a wonderful shout out to our neighbors too, Dale and Susie, if they should ever watch this, probably not, to thank them because they had this extra scrap piece of two by four in their garage and let me have it instead of having to buy one, which is awesome. Thank you both. See how it is. And we definitely got texture. If you were at this point or after you primed it and had a look at it, you would be able to see if you've missed anything, overlook it, see if anything was kind of too flat or not texturized and you could easily touch it up. And so what's next? What's next? I got my colors. I'm going to start my dry brush technique to finish these off. And pretty neat because this project was all leftovers, including the 2x4 from the neighbor, all leftover paint, a little caulking I always have around. But this little project within this video is... Yeah! Cue the dancing lady emoticons. They're done. I did all of the texturizing. A little bit the same, but a little bit different in colors just to make them seem similar but not be exactly the same. Really happy with these. Totally happy with them. Of course, I got the two. That's that. I did spray it with this matte finish. And make sure I let that dry good before I put the dolls on it. Here's the other piece. Now, I went all the way across, or didn't go all the way across. That's the only reason why I did mine in two pieces, so this and my scene would stand out. And that's why my angle was there. This fits perfect. And just for reference, those fit on that 2x4 as well. So you can see where that look kind of blended in. It looks wonderful. So using it practically, be it in a display stage such as what I've shown you, or just on your shelves. You can see that you can, now mind you, of course these headdresses are getting in the way big time, <laughs> but under normal circumstances we definitely have one, two, and then three layers sitting quite well. I happen to have two on here, of course you could switch it. Three could probably fit her dress is covering a lot of that. You could obviously see what I was going for if I only needed one. And definitely fit three. And then the one is back there. You can see those that one's blending in really good with that. For on the average, you wouldn't even hardly notice. So I hope this has been very helpful to you. Thank you, as always, for watching. Thanks for everything comments and being a part of our channel really appreciate it let me know if this comes in handy for you take care don't forget who we are